I'm Phil Mosek from the Cannabis Defense Coalition. We're a, we're a nonprofit activist collective focused on drug policy reform in Washington State. I was uh, returning home from a drug policy conference in Albuquerque, New Mexico in 2009, and I went to the airport with my boarding pass, presented that to the security guard, and when he started to perform the alternative identification procedure, I got out my camera to document the process. He was really uncomfortable with that, called the police, and within a few minutes I was arrested. The, the Transportation Security Administration has a policy that says that, that seems to say, we don't know for sure because they keep their policies and procedures secret, but it seems that if you do not present documentation of your identity, you're required to undergo an alternative process that involves a series of questions that uh, supposedly only you, only the person who you say you are, would know the answers to. And so when I went to the airport, I did not provide any documentation of my identity. I believe that we shouldn't have to identify ourselves and get permission to travel from one state to another. So the, the TSA security guard, uh, I, I talked to the first person I walked up to and went through the, the usual thing where I, I hand over my boarding pass and they kind of look at me confused because they think I've just forgotten to hand them a driver's license or a passport. And uh, eventually they realized that I don't have it. And so in this case, they, they referred me to another security guard just a few feet away. I waited on him, and then he, uh, we went through the same thing. Do you have any identification? He asked if I had anything else with my name on it, and I explained that I, I didn't and that I thought that their policy said I was not required to. So he uh, went to his podium and pulled out some papers and started filling something out. I had a digital camera on me. I got that out and started, I don't remember if I... I don't remember if I started with still photos or video, but started documenting the process. I, I, I filmed this entire encounter from the time that the TSA security guard told me that filming and videotaping, or phot photography and videotaping was not allowed at the checkpoint until the police officer later later took the camera away from me. Can you say that again? No at all. Did you say there's no, video, no cameras or videotaping allowed at the security checkpoint? I've got a uh, law enforcement officer in route. Stand by. Okay. Law enforcement officer? Yes. A police officer. Okay. Can you Stand tell me by. why? What the pro is there a problem? Um, that right there. Um, is there a problem with uh, using uh, uh, a camera in the airport in yeah, publicly yeah, 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 in publicly accessible yeah, areas? Yeah. Okay. I think you're incorrect, but. Why don't you put it down for now, okay? I prefer not to. No, put it down for now. Can I get your name? I said put it down for now. I said put it down for now. Don't touch me. Put it down for now. Do not touch me. Put it down for now. I'm bearing witness. I have a right to I understand my rights. I'm not trying to interfere with your job. I'm telling you now, put it down for now. I am bearing witness. Come here. He's too much off disturbance. He won't put his camera down here. Taking pictures of all of us? Sir. Yes. You may favor. Comply with the same. We're going to escort you out of the airport. Done. Done. You're causing a commotion. Okay. I'm done. I haven't raised my voice. I'm not trying to stop you from doing your job. You, 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 are you flying out, sir? Excuse me? Are you flying out? Yes. Okay. Well, comply with what TSA's rules and regulations are. Before, I plan to comply with all their rules and regulations. Before you interrupt me, comply with what they are requesting of you. Otherwise, we will ask you, escort you out of the airport. Okay. Understand me? I understand you. Okay. I, 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 understand, I plan to comply with all their rules. I do not believe that there is a rule that bars me from using a camera in publicly accessible areas of the airport. If this is a federal checkpoint. You right can't now, do it here. I, I've do checked it. into it, and I know that I can do it here. Well, you can be arrested, then you can check it into even more. For using a camera this in a public place. Point. Sir. Yes. You, you're sir, are you pushing you're right, you're it, okay? You're, you're really pushing now it. You're, now you're in like, Now you're 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 you don't want to show us ID either. All right. Cool. All right. Well, you're fine. Yeah. Let's go, sir. You're leaving the airport. You're being escorted out of the airport. Let's go. If you refuse, we'll arrest you. Let's go. Let's see. Go ahead, go ahead. I, I don't understand. Go ahead, go ahead, bro. Actually, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need your ID now. I, I don't have now, any ID to show you. Sir, if we're going to arrest you for concealing identity. Am I required to? Yes, you are now part of an investigation, a criminal investigation. You are required to give us your ID. What am I being investigated for? For disturbing the peace. I haven't disturbed. Yes, you are. Yes, I'm going to need a statement from you guys. 
You understand me, sir? I, I don't. I need your ID. I'm going to re remain silent. All right, let's go. I'd we're like gonna, to talk to an attorney. We're going to end up arresting you. Come on, sir. We're going to search your property. Yes. We will arrest you for concealing ID. Yes. Yeah. 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 Sam 15, 116. Closer. Actually, give me a second. I don't know what you have in your bag. This officer's going to take your bag. <laughs> Put your bag. 34 with me at uh, 19, please. Place your bag down there, please, sir. I don't consent to any search. You're not being searched. Place your bag down there. And if we arrest you, your property will be searched without... You won't need to. I don't consent Place to any search. Place your bag down. The officers will take your bags for you. Give me your camera. Can I get a camera. I arrived at the airport around 2.30 p.m. and I left the airport police department at something like 4, um, ended up checked into the county jail I think at 9, maybe 9 p.m., something like that. And then I was, uh, was there until the next day. My arraignment was in the morning at 9 a.m. and I was released at about 10 p.m. The second night, fairly early on in my communications with my defense attorney, I, I think it was before, before one of the first meetings she had scheduled with the prosecutor, I, I, I clarified to her that I was not interested in a plea bargain. Uh, and I, I don't remember if I asked her if it was likely or not, but she, she already knew that I had no interest in such. It makes sense to me to go before your peers and plead your case. Uh, about the general demographics, I can say that uh, all six of them and the alternate were women. It, it, it Not only did it seem unusual, I know that it was unusual. The attorneys had lots of difficulty remembering to say ladies instead of ladies and gentlemen. One piece of advice that, that I was given before this process was that women would be preferable. And the reasoning was that the Public sentiment about TSA nowadays is overwhelmingly lopsided in terms of gender. Women are much more opposed to the groping and the naked body scanning that TSA has been doing than men are. So because of that, uh, in, in particular, I was, I was really happy <laughs> that we had a pool of six women and, and a seventh alternate. For that and other reasons, I was so pleased with jury selection that I, I walked over to my partner and I mean, I, I literally teared up and I, I told her that I'm, I'm actually very happy, don't be worried. <laughs> so that was good. They, they, they seemed like a good pool of jurors. And they were, they made the right decision. One of the, one of the jurors uh, who we got was someone that we felt pretty confident would be stricken by the other side, but uh, as it turned out, there was another juror who would have been up, who was still in the pool who we think that they were that the prosecution was even less enthusiastic about having on the jury pool or in the jury, and and the way they did it, uh, the jurors were not they, they weren't they were not already seated in order. I, I've since seen another another trial where the way it was done was the, the jurors were brought in in order, and you knew everyone knew that it would be the first twelve people unless one of them was uh, stricken or removed for cause, in which case it would be the next person. So it was very clear that the people at the end of the line were fairly unlikely to get chosen. In mine, they drew numbers after doing the questioning. So there was no way of telling during the, dur during the, the questioning of the jury, or jur of the veneer, uh, who was more likely than anyone else to be picked. The, the juror who, who was of particular interest uh, was asked one, one of the questions that was asked was, "Do you remember?" Uh, it was it was something to the effect of, "Do you remember a something that was significant in in history that we only know about because someone had a camera there?" And she raised her hand right away and said, "Rodney King." And uh, as it turned out, she had worked in a defense attorney's office and also had a relative who'd had who'd been involved in some kind of a police misconduct case. So this was a person that we really didn't expect to end up on the jury, and she did. My videotape, the videotape that I made of my arrest, was something that we thought we would use as rebuttal evidence. And because of 
the fact that it would only be used as rebuttal evidence, we were not required to provide it during discovery. And we, my, my attorneys, after consulting with me, we decided to to voluntarily provide my video to the prosecution. The, the prosecution, the, the state ended up entering my video as evidence. And that was a surprise. It was a pleasant surprise because it meant that we could talk about, or that my attorneys could talk about it in opening statement. Actually, it turned out that they were concerned that we might complain that the video had been tampered with or something. Um, the, the back story on this was that my, my camera was tampered with while it was in the care of the police. This video that was the best evidence of the trial uh, was only available because I was able to undelete it from my camera. When wow. I was arrested at the, at the airport, the, uh, the police officers took my belongings and I had not verbally identified myself and I had not provided any photo ID. The only identification I provided to them was my boarding pass, which had my real name on it. And they told me that because I was being processed as a John Doe, the other jail, I don't remember if they were talking about county jail or the downtown jail, but they said, the police officers told me they will not take your stuff because you're a John Doe. So we'll keep it here for you in safe storage. So I went to, the, went to their office, got my stuff back, stepped out into the hall, turned on my camera and I see no images. So I immediately went back to them and said, well, my, my camera had stuff on it and when I got it back from you, it didn't. And the police officer I talked to said, uh, he said, well, I, I don't know anything about that. I wasn't involved. You can file a report if you'd like. Uh, fortunately, I had, what well, before, I actually recovered, recovered the images from my camera's memory card on the airplane on the way home. I got some forensical analysis software that scans through a disk and looks for files that have been removed, quote unquote deleted, but that still exist. And that was uh, one of the most joyous moments in my life when I found <laughs> that that video was still on my camera. I ran up the aisle and, and, and told Jesse, the guy who was with me, that, it, that, uh, that I had a very happy thing happen. I, we, we didn't present any evidence and we didn't call any, wet, any witnesses. So, so a, a lot of what we had to do was just show the jury what happened and go back over the video and say, now, now Officer Dilly said that Mr. Mosek yelled. Okay, where did it happen? And in, in fact, at one point, my attorney uh, actually played the video and asked him to say stop whenever we hit the point where I did something that he had accused me of doing. And, and of course he couldn't because I hadn't done these things. And the police officer's stories were all very similar. They had similar details up in their claims about what happened, um, but none of them were accurate. And so I, I suspect that the prosecutor probably didn't realize until this evidence showed up in November, 13 months after this happened, that their witnesses had all perjured themselves. When we showed them that video voluntarily, we really thought the case would be dropped. In fact, I had to think long and hard about whether or not to voluntarily provide that video because I was really interested in going to trial and having a jury look over the accusations that had been made and the evidence and declare me to be not guilty. And while an early dismissal would have had basically the same effect, it would not have felt the same.